Hey YouTube, Hester781. So this is a continuation of the last video. Uh, we just did an auger belt and now carb clean. This is uh, surging, uh, struggling to idle, but you know, get it up to high L, it's ring, 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 and you put it under a load, it gets kind of better, but we're gonna see if we can get it all the way better. So um, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be hard to show you every bolt I'm gonna take out, but that's one of the hidden ones. This bolt, that bolt, this pops off, this pops off. All of these, I'm pretty sure this one. Um, this one, and most importantly, this one. <laughs> yes, it is hidden behind this bracket. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I get that out. So I still have this kind of just sitting in place from the last video, but all you're gonna do is take this one bolt out, which is going to allow the chute to move. Um, also, you gotta take out this little wing nut. I forgot I put that back on. It's been a couple days. And there, now your chute's out of the way. Disconnect this rod. All it is, is one quick pin. Slides out, the rod will slide right out of this. Then, you're going to remove these two bolts, two half inch bolts. There is one other one holding them, which is right here, but you don't need to worry about that one because once you have those two out, you'll be able to slide this right out of the way and get to that bolt. That's the easiest way I can find to do it without having to remove all this stuff and everything. Um, once you do get this bolt out, I highly recommend cutting a notch. And I've done that to hundreds. I, I, I just, it's so much simpler to just sneak a wrench in there, loosen that up, and then pull the whole shield out rather than mess with all this stuff, especially if it's the middle of a snowstorm. I mean, I don't know what they were thinking. Why couldn't they have just notched this metal and just made it? Anyway, moving on. So yes, I'm well aware that there is a pole in your way, but there's no better way to get you to see what I'm doing here. This just pops right off. Um, this throttle should pop off as well. Hopefully it's not desperately corroded on. Usually I'm able to just sneak in. There we go. Yeah, a lot of corrosion in that, but we got her. So now a couple of 10. 10 millimeter. And then like I said, the last one's gonna be hidden up here. Get that with a wrench. I can't remember if the top, the bolt that holds on the, um, the cable guide has to come off or not, but we're gonna find out together. And there's that one. It is wiggling, so I don't think that one needs to come off. A couple more over here. at least one bolt did you actually fix anything today what do we got left just the one up here yep one in the front now there is going to be a wire connected to that front panel let me back up i'm right, trying to get this just up and out of our way. We only need to get to the carb, so. There. All right, here you do have your wire for your uh, kill switch. Don't remember if I can just sneak this out. What am I hitting? There's just brackets everywhere.
There we go. It's this uh, bottom bracket was getting caught up there. So yeah, we can leave all that connected. I mean, obviously not the uh, primer line. Pull that right off. All right, carb time. A couple of 10 millimeters, pop the uh, breather hose right out of your way. And there is a washer, or uh, sorry, lock washer on the back of these. So just keep that in mind. If you have a little magnet, just take a second or just drop them on the floor. Okay, um, choke, you should just pull forward and down. This just kind of goes up and into this bracket that I'll show you in a second. This should come off and out of the way. All right, now I'm just gonna show you how that was sitting. See, just like that. So when you turn this, it actuates the choke. Next, there is no fuel shut off on these, so I'm gonna have to pinch that. Can I just sneak the throttle off? I'm gonna sneak the throttle out if I can. You guys are right in the way. All right, spring off, cool. Throttle, I have to come all the way off to do that. Eh. Eh. Why? <laughs> oh well. All right, let's get the fuel line off. Let's get it pinched. Clamp is all the way out of the way. Why? Do they do this on purpose? Write down in the comments if you think they do this on purpose. There we go. Don't make clamps big enough, I tell you. It's like it's just, there we go, too small. Of course, you're just staring at my hand because I can't seem to ever find the correct angle for you guys. This will pop off, done. For Christ's sake. Now, can I sneak this out? Not a chance. Yeah, let's pop one of the studs out. See if the old twin grips will give you a purchase. Otherwise we'll have to double nut it. Oh, look at that. I just love these players. All right, now the question is, do we have to take both or just the one? Ah, God, it's so close. Yes. Okay. All that's left is the throttle link. And there's our prize, hard fought. All right, let's see what uh, surprises this thing has in store for us. The fuel looked clean, so, oh boy. <laughs> you know, if, when I catch it, there's nothing in it. When I don't catch it, it looks like that. This has just got the all the scuzzies in it. Oh, look at that. Uh-huh. All right, well, 
I'm glad there's something in it. Look at this. That's just like gel. I would always rather find dirt and garbage inside one of these carbs than see nothing and wonder how am I going to get it to stop searching. <laughs> so at least there's a smoking gun. Let me get one of my better screwdrivers. See how this one has like a couple of wings on it and this one's flat? It's the flat ones you want to hang on to because they'll go right down and get a good grip without rubbing on the threads of the wall. Almost. Yeah, the other option on these is um, you actually drill the pilot out one size bigger. They're set up to run so lean from the factory that they, uh, a lot of guys just do that starting out. They'll just drill it, and I can't say I blame them. It's one of those things, if you're not having a problem now, you are going to have one later. So, <sighs> I can see through that. That's plenty clean. What about the emulsion tube? Uh, I think I can actually see through all of them. There is some, I don't know if you can see, there's some dirt on the wall in there, which, I mean, naturally, the whole carb needs to be gone through. So here's where you just look See how many threads are poking out for the idle screw. This is about two. They're almost always about two threads. You can count the turns, but where they're plastic, it can get a little fuzzy towards the end. You know, was that a half a turn? Was it one turn? I just look at how far it was out and uh, go from there. I mean, you're not really running these at idle much anyhow. And now uh, let's see. This O-ring is hard as a rock. I do have those, so. <laughs> Looks like there's some crap in there for the uh, pilot. Anyway, date with the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll turn you back on. And after. Like brand new. Always does a good job. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, just going to slap this one back together. And uh, hopefully that fixes it. Like I said, the, you know, the scuzzies in the bowl mixed with the, uh, the gas in there didn't smell the greatest either. But um, definitely more than one reason to not be running good. <sighs> what else? So yeah, just did the auger belt. Um, Finished the oil change. It's very simple on these. I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, made a short on how I do those. Nothing spectacular, just a little hack. If you're curious, go look. And the float. There's a little spring on there. Gotta be careful. Do not want to lose it. Poke that through. Once it's in, it holds itself in. It's got a little, little cup for the spring. And we'll throw that on. Place your bets. Is it going to still surge? I don't know why, but part of me thinks yes. <clears throat> Call me negative, but if I drill out the pilot jet, it's definitely going to surge. I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like damned if you do, damned if you don't sometimes. If I put it on, sorry, I said that wrong. If I put it on now without drilling out the pilot jet, it's going to surge. <sighs> you know what I'm trying to say. I don't want to unless I have to or need to. and Keep that to where he can drain it. And I just pop the gaskets off these screws just because... 
Didn't want to risk them getting messed up. I've never had a problem, but if they come off easy, I just take them off. And now, gotta get a O-ring for this. So there's actually two O-rings, one right here at the bottom, and they're both just completely destroyed. You can see the black coming off in my fingers. Very common. This one just like ballooned right out. You know, sometimes they don't, but like I said, this one was, uh... <laughs> look at the size of it. Uh, anyway, two new O-rings, slap those in. And when you're done, it should look something like that. One at the bottom, one at the top. Little WD-40. Everyone loves when I use this stuff. I don't know how many, why, why you guys hate WD-40 so much. It has done absolutely nothing to you. I just grew up with it. It was always, you know, top shelf in the, in the closet. Grandfather liked using it. Everyone likes using it. And we're going to wind that in just till we see two threads poking through right there. That maybe a hair proud, but that's about where it was. Yeah, just there. All right, let's get back on the machine. So, yeah, this is going to be uh, just as tricky going back in, I think. So we'll tuck this bolt through because we know that that doesn't fit the other way. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. All right. I didn't know if the bolt would fit all the way through the carb to throw it on after, but I guess it will. So sneak that up and on. So far, so good. Throw that throttle linkage in place. Just gets pushed down into the hole. Be gentle. There we go. All right, that's in. And might as well get the spring. While we're here. Come on. Ah, it's right on the edge of the hole. And we're in. All right. <sighs> It's all uphill from here. Throw that in. Stud. No! Was I wrong? E. Yes, all right. So the stud does need to go through before you, uh, you know, get too carried away. Luckily, you can throw it back in afterwards. Make sure you got your gasket lined up in the back. And start that in. There's also a gasket on the back of this isolator. Mine is stuck to it, so it did not fall out of place, but just keep that in mind when you are um, doing yours, that it can happen. Murphy's Law. So I'll just send this in. Tighten her down. I think I'm gonna double nut this one, just cause uh, well, I wanna show you guys how to do it. And plus I wanna be sure that it's 100% tight. So take your first nut, put it on there backwards and put your other nut on the outside. Just, just till the front of it, cause you wanna spin that other nut back to it. And they're both 10 mil. So just get a second wrench to hold the inner nut and now tighten the outer. Don't go crazy. And now you can just ratchet that stud right into place. Don't go too crazy because you still have to back it off. Trying to get it to catch. There we go.
And like I said, you're going into aluminum. So, uh, you know, snug is tight. And then next was this plate, right? Yep, I'm going to tuck that choke out just to make it easier for us going back in. Like I said, you're going to feed that rod up and in and then go over those studs. This hose will actually help hold that bracket on. Nice. <coughs> Moving right along. So don't forget your lock washer that you dropped on the ground earlier. One on each stud. Yeah, that was a nut. In case you didn't just hear me launch that across the shop. Get that nut on. All right, one more lock washer. Am I gonna drop it? it goes right down the throat of the carb. It's usually my luck. And sweet. No need to hit these with the gun. Quarter inch ratchet is more than enough. You will break something. I think we're ready to fire it up and see what happens. All right, so I got the auxiliary fuel source hooked up. Um, I did empty and clean out the tank. I put some fresh non-ethanol fuel in, but I just want to test it before I uh, you know, run the good stuff through. So let's see, choke is on. I just killed it excellent it sounds great yeah on these models you got low idle and then all the way back is a, a kill huh <sighs> now I get to put it all back together and then it's gonna start surging and now that it's all back together let's see if it'll do it one more time fire in the hole Can't argue with that. So that'll wrap this one up, guys. Uh, I don't know if you saw while it was running the first time. I did run the augers, and they ran perfect. No noise, no nothing. And uh, here's what that cover looks like once you carve that little notch out. You can still clamp that shield down, no problem. And uh, now, if you have any carb issues in the middle of winter, all you need is a 10 millimeter open end wrench, and you don't have to play around with any of that crap. So I want to thank you guys again, as always, for liking, commenting, subscribing, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.